Today, we're talking with Steve Donahue of Recycled Cycles, and you're not just from Recycled Cycles. You actually started the company. You're the owner? Yeah, I am. I, we opened it in uh, October of 1994 to sell used bikes, and so we've been doing it pretty strong ever since, 25 years now. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, thanks. So tell us a little bit more about Recycled Cycles and what you do there. Well, we sell new and used bikes, parts, accessories, um, the full-service repair shop. Uh, we have been able to help the community in various ways with donating bikes and uh, things like that. But mostly we have people come in with their trade-in of old bikes, things that kids have outgrown or they no longer want to use towards something new and more modern. Uh, we carry new bikes from Marin and Kona. So sometimes people have their old bike from 1985 or whatever, and they want to come in and say, hey, what's happened over the past 30 years in bicycling? And uh, a lot's happened. So they'll come in and be amazed at what the new bikes have in store for them. So they'll trade in the old bike, buy a nice new one, and then we take the old bike and we buff it. A buff is we take the old bike and replace any worn-out parts that are on it and uh, clean it, tune it, and put it up for sale. And every used bike we sell comes with a uh, 30-day guarantee and things like that. So we, we really just don't throw... A used bike back out there in the ship we got it in. It's it goes through about an hour, hour and a half long process that can change anything from flat tubes to a whole drivetrain, cables and housing, and all that stuff. So a lot goes into it. It's a fun, fun kind of way to do a bike shop. It's a little different. It is very different. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've been in there before. Actually, I've got a few parts oh. and stuff from there. So <laughs> right yeah. on. Uh, cool. So tell me this, why would somebody buy a used bike instead of a brand new bike? I think a lot of it has to do with their personal preferences. It could be economy, what they can afford. You know, it's a, you're going to pay a lot less for a used bike in general. Um, and then uh, sometimes people are dipping their toe in a hobby. Uh, they may not be, you know, they see their friends going and doing uh doothy every weekend and think hey that's kind of a fun place to go i'd like to go join you guys and then they get there going this is on my this is my bag so uh they can get into it entry level a little cheaper way to to go and try the hobby out and um uh sometimes people make a mistake with a bike too they might buy something that is the wrong size or um a little bit more bike than they need for what they want to do uh so, you know, they can come in and trade that in towards something different that might fit their needs better. Um, Recycled Cycles is uh, where we're located near the University of Washington, the Burke Gilman Trail, and all the bridges that go into Seattle. We have a lot of commuters that come through our store. And um, they are as hard on their bikes as any mountain biker is. <laughs> because, I mean, the drivetrains come in and they're, they're worn out and brake pads are worn out and rim walls are worn out from... Uh, old school brakes that uh, they just ride them so hard through all the weather. And so we do a lot of repair business and every once in a while you get somebody that comes in and their bike is just take it to the, take it to the field and shoot it. It is it's dead. So that's a way that they can uh, uh, get a, another used bike to kind of use up in their bike commute. So there's a lot of different reasons to come through for a used bike, but uh, I think economy is the biggest one. I think people want to save some money. So if somebody's looking at a used bike, what are some key things that they should look at uh, when they're thinking about buying one? There's a lot to look. There's a lot to consider. I think the size is first and foremost a, uh, a big thing to check. Make sure it's your proper frame size. Uh, I don't mean 29 or wheels or 27.5 wheels or 26 inch wheels. That's kind of a personal thing. But if the frame is too big, um, you're kind of going to get a bike that's going to be a little bit dangerous for you and not very much fun to ride. Um, and if you do, when you do find the bike that is uh, your size and uh, kind of what you're thinking about, don't be shy to take it for a test ride and actually take it out there for a good 25 minutes. You know, just clear it with the person you're buying it from or the shop you're at or whatever. And say, I'm going to take this thing out for a little, for a good ride. Make sure uh, it feels right as far as like length of your, between your, 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 hand, your seat and your handlebars. Make sure it's not too long. Um, all those kinds of things are super important. And then um, I guess this kind of goes against my heart because I really love old mountain bikes. But 
buying something that's very old can be a problem. It, it, I equate it to like going out and buying a, uh, a computer from 1985 or 86 or 87 or 95. They're useless now. The technology changes so fast and improves so much that a mountain bike from, you know, let's just say 1990 or not too old, probably 2000. A lot of that stuff has changed so much over time that, uh, you know, you're going to get out there and you're really going to feel where the trails have advanced past where that bike can really handle. Travel is going to be lower and the rebounds and the shocks and things like that are going to be slower. So um, you really got to kind of know what you what you want. Maybe talk to other people who are into the sport to to kind of help you help you through it. Um, you can always tell how much a bike has been ridden by the touch points too. I mean, if the if the grips are worn thin, you know, where people have been holding on to it super tight, or the seats of the sides of the seat are just ripped up, um, that bike's been been ridden hard. Um, the, the sides of pedals can be telling, you know, if they're, if they're regular flat pedals and the, the outside is just scratched away, that is a good indicator that the bike has been kind of, not abused, but just ridden hard. Um, boy, there's a lot of things, uh, wheels, make sure your wheels aren't cracked. Like you just described, um, and are true. Um, a little bit of a wiggle is not such a bad deal if you have disc brakes going, but if you have, if you're looking at a bike with rim brakes, be it like linear pull brakes or old cantilevers, that's a huge thing because uh, uh, it's not going to function properly. Um, and then cracks. <laughs> There's a lot of aluminum frames out there in the world that have had various um, designs tried to them and things like that. And then over time, they just can't stand up to it. So, um, Always look at the gussets, uh, at the head tubes, bottom bracket, seat clamp area, and then rear dropout. Make sure that all that stuff, you don't see any hairline cracks in it. Um, so you kind of have to approach it as a, with some confidence, uh, when you, especially if you're talking to a private seller, because you know, they want to sell their bike, but you want to make sure you're buying something that's not going to be a problem later. So if they see you come up with your, you know, your rag and your, magnifying glass to see how things look. I mean, it, it's your money, so you want to spend it wisely. Um, if you're buying a bike from, a used bike from a bike shop, Recycled Cycles or any other shop that sells used bikes, a lot of that stuff's already been vetted. Uh, you, when we buy bikes here, for example, we take all those things into consideration mm -hmm. before they are purchased by us. And then the buff process, which is kind of going on behind me, um, that allows for the bikes to be sold with confidence. There's nothing, there's no surprises that are going to erupt. And then if you do end up having something that occurs, you have our guarantee that it's, we'll take care of it for you. Um, just so there's a lot of stuff to consider. <laughs> um, brakes too. If you have hydraulic brakes, make sure that they feel good and don't go all the way to the, don't go all the way to the grip right away. It'd be a sign that they either need to be bled or that, or that the brake pads are all, already worn away. So if somebody, if for example, they don't really know the difference between a, a mechanical disc brake and a hydraulic disc brake or a 27.5 or a 29, what, what sort of advice would you give them if they were trying to inspect a used bike? Um, <clears throat> I guess, again, do, uh, do, do the research um, or ask other friends who are into biking um i think that's the best way to do it because you you know you can uh look at forums online and things like that but uh doing your own research at your own pace uh and talking to other people about them is a is a great way to go um you know don't be even you can go into a bike shop and you know shop a new bike and, and ask your questions that way you say hey well i don't understand this one has a has a cable running it and this one is hydraulic what's the difference and you know bike shops are here to serve the whole bike community so you're not going to get an you know you're going to get a good answer from somebody you're not going to get ah you know get out of here we, we just want to sell you a bike everyone's everyone's in the community of good solid information that they'll transfer out to to new riders 
What are some common mistakes that you've seen people make when they buy a used bike? When we have people come in, come in to recycle, that's my, my best example. Um, we do have people come in and say, hey, I just bought this bike used. Um, I just want to get it tuned up. And you start to look at it with the customer and you realize there's a, there's a lot going on with the bike. So you really, you really end up kind of disappointing people when you say, Hey, I, you know, I got this bike on Craigslist for, for 500 bucks, you know, can I just want to get it, get it a tune up. And then a uh, professional puts it up in the bike stand and starts going through it. And you realize, well, the chain and cassette are both worn out hundred bucks your middle chain ring, the popular chain ring is worn out, 50 bucks. Uh, you know, your shifters aren't working very well. Your rear derailleur is worn out. All those things add up fast before you even start talking about the service to, to put them all on. So um, I think that uh, people, when they're buying a used bike, have to have, like I said before, the knowledge about what they want to do and the knowledge about what to expect with the bikes so that they can not get something that's already worn out and then get surprised with what it's going to take to get the thing to go. All right. Now we're going to play a game. All right. You ready to play a game? All right. Let me get some coffee here. All right. I call this game good deal or bad deal. So I've gone out. I bought three used mountain bikes. These are great deals. The sellers assured me of that, that these, these are awesome bikes. And so now I'm going to pull them over. You're going to take a look at them. And uh, yeah, tell me what you would look for if the bike came into your shop. And then also tell me if I got, I got a good deal or a bad deal. And the right, right. answer is a good deal, right? Right? Because I don't want to find out I paid too much. So yeah. All right. I'll, I'll be gentle. I'll be gentle. All right. Great. First bike up. Now this bike, they tell me, is a classic. It's an Italian steel frame. And, uh, you know, it's, it's actually going up in value is what I hear now. Uh, this is a this is a Bianchi uh, Grizzly. Well, it's got uh, it has a front derailleur on it, so that gives you a little indication. Um, there's also uh, so it's an XT rear derailleur, steel frame. I paid a thousand bucks for it. What do you think? Well, you might want to sit down for this. Uh, I think you paid too much. Oh no! Bad deal. Bad deal. Bad deal. Uh, the the first thing you said was the you know the person you bought from told you it's a classic Italian made. I don't know if you said made or not, but a classic Italian mountain bike. Uh, that's true. Bianchi is an Italian company, but let's not start calling things classic until they're fifty or sixty years old. Um, the uh, it looks really good, and if you, it looks like there's some smooth threaded tires on there, so it might make a nice uh, urban assault vehicle for cruising around town. But uh, that's you probably paid twice as much as you should have. It's probably a five hundred dollar bike. So bad deal. Nah, I'd say right. so, but uh, you know, bad deals are bad deals. If, if you have fun riding it, it's a great deal. All right. Up next, we're gonna we're gonna come into a new millennium with this next bike. It's a little bit newer. Uh, let's see how we went here. This is a Kona Lisa. Now I don't ride this bike myself. But I got okay. to think I can ride this bike. Uh, this is a Kona Lisa. Not to be confused with a Mona Lisa, but <laughs> you know it's it's a little bit newer. It's got a you know a Marzocchi fork on here. Um, this also has a, uh, well, it does have a front derailleur as well. And it also has XT rear derailleur and aluminum frame. You know, hydraulic brakes, it has disc brakes. It's a step up from the last bike. Yeah, very modern. What'd that set you back? Paid 500 for this one. Thumbs up. Good deal. Yeah, good deal. So um, if somebody's going to buy this, what would they want to look at? What would they want to look over to know that this, this would be a, a bike worthy to buy in? Uh, well, the first thing to, to look for is, you know, are you looking for a small frame or an extra small frame? I can't tell what size that is, but that's, you know, for somebody who's, you know, a little shorter. Um, but 
when you have the uh, the frame size dialed in, uh, that is it. Is it a Marzocchi pipe or Marzocchi shock on it? Um, having that thing uh, make sure that thing bounces and moves moves freely. Uh, if it's got stiction or 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 cracks or, or I would say more like scratches on the silver stanchion part of it, it may be abused. But that bike looks even has reflectors on the wheels. I mean, that bike looks showroom fresh. Um, and the hydraulic disc brakes are just such a nice touch on any bike because the way you can really uh, modulate them to, for, your, for your riding pleasure. Um, no, that's a good bike. I like those. We've sold those before. Those are nice bikes. So good deal or bad deal? I think it's a good deal. All right. All right. Very good. It even has a dropper post. I didn't, I didn't notice that. There you go. Even better deal. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Woo. All right. So this next bike I'm not really familiar with, but you know, sometimes you go to the grocery store and they have those big displays and there's like some company that has, uh, you know, a big display for their grocery product or whatever. And then they're selling, they're like giving away like a snowboard or something along with that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I think maybe that's what this is from because this is, I know this company from a, a cooler company. They make like ice chests and stuff. So uh, I, apparently they also did it with a bike. Um, I think the guy, I don't know, it seems a little strange to me. The frame sounds, I don't know what it's made out of. It could be plastic or something. Maybe it's, just, maybe it's not even supposed to be written. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, uh, I paid 500 for this one. What do you think about this? I mean, it's, it's got a suspension fork. It's full suspension. So you've got some thingy in here. I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, and then the, the shock. And it doesn't have a front derailleur, so I don't think it has very many gears. It's got this big thing back here. I'm not sure what that's about. <laughs> well, so let me ask you a couple questions. Sure. Um, you bought it from a private seller. Yep. And you paid 500 bucks for it. Yeah. Um, that's probably a four to five thousand dollar bike. Um, it's a carbon fiber frame and swing arm. The fact it doesn't have a derailleur up front, if you look to the back, the big rear cassette there allows for uh, lots of gear options for climbing hills and stuff. Um, and Yeti makes coolers, you're right, but they also have been making mountain bikes since 1980 six or seven so um that bike to me if someone were to roll that into the recycled cycles saying hey i want to sell my bike um they'd get a lot of q a about that uh because i wouldn't be surprised if that was sold so low because it's stolen um oh. so you you could do a couple things to to check you could uh uh, go to bikeindex.com and, and throw the serial number into their database. Uh, serial number is usually located on the bottom bracket below the crank set or uh, somewhere else on the bicycle. But you can go to their database and put in a serial number. And if, if somebody has reported a bike stolen, it'll come up. And uh, if that's the case, you can um, alert the authorities and try and uh, get your bike, get the bike back to them. Um, you can even call your local Yeti dealer and see if they know, because those bikes don't sell every day. And when a bike shop sells something that nice, they're usually pretty, pretty happy with it. So I would do some checking. There's just a big, there's just a big area that's scratched down there as well. So you just see some scratch. Oh, <laughs> oh that's even worse. <laughs> oh. if, if there was a serial number down there, it's been removed. Oh, why would that happen? Yeah. So it can't be traced. So I think you may have bought yourself a stolen bike. So good deal, bad deal? <laughs> no deal. I would oh. not bought that. That's a bad oh. deal. Yeah. Here I was thinking I paid too much because I thought it was like some weird bike, but. No. Oh. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a beautiful bike, but it's probably not that belong to the person you bought it from. All right. Well, thanks for playing. Yeah. <laughs> never buy bikes out of vans never buy bikes <laughs> out of uh fields in the middle of nowhere i mean that's a little uh, sketchy to me 
Uh, well, thank you for playing along. I really appreciate that. And uh, keeping a straight face, even though I was having a little bit of a hard time keeping a straight face myself. <laughs> With that, any final words of wisdom for somebody looking to buy a used mountain bike? Um, I think trying to uh, get a used mountain bike is a great is a great idea and it should be pursued with caution. Um, the, uh, more you ask questions, the more you get familiar with what you really are after, um, you can start to take this broad focus and narrow it down to, you know, two or three options, two or three things you want to test ride that are in your size. Um, but one thing I tell people who ask me these similar questions, um, if you are uh, looking at a bike on Craigslist or eBay and or a private seller, um, and you're lo you're local with recycled cycles, this is something we do. Um, meet them here. Meet your seller here. We have a big parking lot across the street, and um, you can take it for a good test ride. But what you're doing is you're meeting in a neutral spot, which is uh, what you should do. Um, if they don't want to meet you at the place of your choosing, yeah, it might be a might be a problem. But if you do meet somebody here and you you, you test drive their bike and you think, hey, you know, this is pretty good, bring it inside and have a pro just give you the once over before you exchange the money. Um, that way, you know, if it's uh, if it does have a smoke drivetrain or needs this that and the other thing, and you're getting an estimate for a repair that's a hundred bucks, walk back outside with the person and you know start haggling a little bit, make sure you have good information about what you're going to buy. So you're not up, you know, where, you know, who's Creek uh, without a paddle. So, um, that's probably the biggest thing. Don't get taken, uh, for a ride because you want to ride a bike. Just make sure you find a good solid bike that is going to check out and, uh, have fun with it. Steve, thanks again for your time. Really appreciate you hopping on here and giving us yeah. your wisdom. And congratulations on the 25 years of business at Recycle Cycles. Thank you very much. It's been fun.